Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to yet another episode of Vava Reviews, where we're going to be talking about Apple laptops. Again. Now, if you were able to check out my last two videos on the same topic of MacBooks, thank you so much for both watching as well as contributing to the discussion down in the comment section. Being able to hear all your thoughts on the laptop as well as interact with some of you guys was a true pleasure, so I really appreciate that. Now, as I was scrolling through some of the comments, I noticed somewhat of a mini trend emerging with a number of you inquiring about the rumored ARM MacBooks that are scheduled to drop early next year in 2021. So clearly there's some considerable interest in the topic of our MacBooks and whether that's the real direction Apple is headed with their Mac lineup. And this would be a pretty radical move considering their history and given the fact that Intel has been pretty much dominating the CPU market for laptops for the longest time now, with more industry analysts giving us a sneak peek into what we can expect. I figured I'd just summarize all my thoughts on the ARM MacBooks as well as give you guys my take on all the predictions, so stay tuned. Now, for those of you who don't know, the ARM processor is a part of a family of CPUs developed by Advanced Risk Machines, and that's based on the RISC architecture, but what does that all mean? To answer that, we'll need to compare the two major approaches to CPU architecture. On one hand, we have CISC, that stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer and is currently the industry standard for most laptops, desktops, and workstations we see today. So pretty much any Mac you've purchased since 2006 uses this very architecture. The main idea here is to reduce the number of instructions that a program executes by combining a high number of simple instructions into one complex instruction. And this, in essence, uses up less memory, but also uses a higher number of cycles and places a greater emphasis on hardware. RISC, on the other hand, which is what a lot of ARM-based devices use, stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. And over here, we see that the aim is quite different. RISC processors exclusively use a higher number of simple instructions that just use a single clock cycle, which means everything is executed in a uniform manner and there's just less overall emphasis on hardware. Now, this basically translates into lower power consumption and costs, which is why they're using all of today's smartphones and a majority of tablets. In fact, Apple themselves use the ARM-based architecture for their A-series chips in both the iPhone and iPad, and we see that the performance boosts on those chips are quite significant every year and pretty much trample down any competition from similar devices that are powered by Intel chips. In other words, Intel could just be ditched altogether for these new ARM chips since they're running into a bit of an innovative plateau. The x86 chips just aren't advancing as rapidly as their ARM counterparts and mobile technology just seems to be at its peak right now. So it's only inevitable that companies like Apple start designing custom ARM chips tailor-made for their laptops, which would allow them to work off of their own timelines, optimize their hardware, and dramatically reduce their costs. It would also allow them to pave the way for a somewhat new ecosystem and some pretty new and exciting products that allow them to further differentiate themselves from the rest of the competition. This seems pretty genius to me, but what does that all look like and when can we expect to see this? Thankfully, we have our Apple insiders and industry analysts to rely on for all of the latest trends and leaks. And back in March, Ming-Chi Kuo said Apple's first Mac notebooks with ARM-based processors would launch in the fourth quarter of 2020 or the first quarter of 2021. And we can also expect them to phase out the introduction of their new ARM chips, starting with their entry-level MacBooks, like the MacBook Air. But more interestingly, it could also mean a possible resurrection of the entry-level 12-inch MacBook that was dumped back in 2019. The 12-inch MacBook would be the perfect contender for the new ARM chips, given that it was Apple's sleekest and most portable laptop at the time. It would allow them to pack in more battery life and improve power while keeping the design extremely thin and compact as usual. This could be a bit of an experiment for Apple with their more casual customer base, and you could potentially find this target market being treated to some improved performance for a lower price, which is a win-win. Now, while we can expect the entry-level MacBook as well as the MacBook Air transition into new streamlined ARM-based devices, don't expect the same for the Pro lineup or their desktops quite yet. 
The flagship MacBook Pros should still continue to be powered on either Intel or AMD chips, providing the end users with the more familiar chipsets for a couple more years at least. So to summarize, a new and exclusive custom designed ARM chipset seems to be a smart move for Apple. It wouldn't just lead to overall better performance, but would keep them from relying on CPU manufacturers like Intel to streamline and facilitate a more seamless product roadmap heading into the future. And with the target market being the casual laptop user, we see them mitigating a lot of risks that were initially posed to them when they first considered adopting ARM-based chipsets. These chips could pretty much allow Apple to give us the sleek and slim designs we all love, take away the need for a fan for better thermal management, as well as improve battery life. So it's pretty much the perfect combination. And as customers, we can be hopeful of more affordable prices too. Fingers crossed. So there you have it guys, looks like we're headed into a new chapter with Apple's entry-level MacBook lineup, and I couldn't be more excited. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comment section as usual. I, as always, love hearing all your thoughts and I'll try my level best to respond to every single one of you. Now, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. But that's it for me. Take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Cheers.